This is the sacrifice of uh, Isaac. I can't help you know, but feel like you know it's been. This story was written maybe 2,000 years. So we've got it, exactly the same things happening now. An angel appears and prevents the sacrifice. See, we haven't changed at all in 2,000 years. Okay, so I saw this and I, I you know, I was really fascinated by it. Uh, and I started started to think, uh, well, how did that happen? How must have all that you know played out? And so I started making drawings. And this is the painting that came about. This one is eight feet by eight feet. I think it's the most successful that I did in the whole series of the, of the border violence. Uh, I've had several people wanting to buy it. So this is me, you know, thinking of how the how the mass execution must have happened. In the painting by Caravaggio of the Sacrifice of Isaac, you have somebody, you have the angel interceding and preventing the sacrifice. That, the thing is, yeah, in the painting of the Sacrifice of Isaac, you have goodness interceding. Here you have, I have a hand pointing, but there's really no hope, like, it blows my mind, like, it's just, and it hurts me, I guess, to my soul to think, you know, those guys hanging there without their heads, I mean, they had a mom and a dad or a mom or somebody that bathed them, that cared for them as much as I care for myself. The man doing that also had somebody care. Uh, you look at the men when they're captured and they, you know, they look like my uncles, or they look like my brother, you know, the leaders of the car. I mean, they're, you know, I'm from Reynosa, and some of those people, that, I mean, they, they're my, they, you know, they're my people. And I can't believe we're doing this. Actually, it, it really unsettles my mind. In the kidnapping, there's a man holding a woman that's looking out at you. There's a man holding a knife in the, the one that the man's tied to the tree. It's always, you know, sort of creates a dialogue there with, draws you in, makes you maybe identify with the killers or identify with the victims. You can't see the horizon line on this works, but again, I've always tried to put the horizon line to give them more money mentality. You can't see the details you could, but he's got a snake skin boots. So, you know, the snake is symbolic of the devil. He's like the, the you know, the personification of evil in my work. I think the next one is the, uh, an example of an underpainting. Sometimes it depends, you know, the the surrounding, but like in this case I did all the values of brown. It's brown and white and a little bit of black. I do make it darker and then uh, really yeah. accentuate the lights yeah. to get the contrast. This took me like four months to paint. They all took me like three, four months. You get an idea of the scale. I've been also lucky to have the galleries where I've shown it, the museums, uh, paint the background. Like they painted the walls uh, black or dark brown, mm -hmm. so that the background of my paintings blends with the background of the walls, makes the figure like really pop out. And I think uh, uh, going to the next one, these, these are just images from uh, I think in two th in two thousand and nine there was a before the major fightings like erupted in, in Reynosa. Go to the next one. Uh, there was like one shootout that got a lot of coverage, like in 2009. And uh, I saw some pictures of, yeah, I think some of these come from, from that shootout. Uh, and I wanted to do something like this, you know, some, this is the, uh, the surrender of Breda by, by Velasquez. And go to the next one, the, the Night Watch by Rembrandt. I've seen this, I, I haven't seen the previous one, but I've seen this one at the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam. And it's just impressive. It's a huge painting. It's beautiful. It's just like that. You know, I always want to do something large, something huge like that, with a lot of people. A lot of things happening. And so when that shootout occurred in, in Reynosa, and you saw the photos of the of the of the federal police and the uh, the cartel members that had been killed or captured, I mean, like that just it was perfect for making something this large. Uh, and now th this painting and the previous one, the last case, you know, it commemorates a, a, a victory of the Spanish over the Dutch. You know, the, the, the city of, of Breda was surrendered to the Spanish. And it, it's like, uh, it, it almost looks like the last one was right there, you know, with a camera. You know, took a picture and painted it. But this actually painted from a reenactment, you know, the king of Spain wasn't there, so they reenacted this in front of, like in a theater, 
front of the king. This, the night watch is kind of like the, the guys nowadays that reenact like also a civil war battle. So I wanted to follow along that tradition, like reenact a, a battle, a contemporary battle, and you know, paint it in that, that monumental, monumental size. This is a, it's by Peter Paul Rubens, you know, the crucifixion, you know, these are also, you know, large altar pieces. And these were also painted from the reenactment during uh, Easter, you know, so this idea of reenacting uh, and the use of theater to influence painting, uh, it's also been influence in my work, uh, they're all reenacted, the lighting is, is just real enough, it's not, uh, it's not actual lighting, like I make some figures, you know, brighter than others, because it helps the painting, I feel. It's not the way that actual light would fall on a, on a, on a crowd of people. So like I had a residence in New Mexico, in Roswell, New Mexico, where I did most of the paintings. Uh, I was there for two years, and they, I found about this artist, and I, when I saw his work, and the way that he painted figures, the way he painted uh, denim, and the way he painted the faces, I felt like I had painted this, you know? Like it was so, it, and I, I still look at his work, and, it's so much like my work that I, it's, it kind of unsettled me a little. And this is a, it's a large painting also. So this one really kind of, you know, you look at Velasquez and you, you're like, well, he's on the art history books, he's just huge. So you're intimidated, you look at Rembrandt, you're like intimidated that, you know, I'm like, well, am I really as good as Rembrandt, you know? And you, but you see this guy, like somebody has more approach of when he's, he was doing this large figurative compositions. It's a, this is called a powwow. He had a grant from the Secretary of the Interior to do, uh, like, he, like for a year he lived with the Navajos in Arizona and he did this, you know, you know, he depicted their culture. It's another one of his paintings, it's just, I mean, it's just like something I would have done. It's called the Navajo Pieta. He died of a brain tumor. His name's uh, William uh, or Bill Bichet. He painted this, like, I spoke to his, his widow and, and this is, a, you know, they're large paintings, they're life-size figures. Uh, she told me he painted this, you know, a few days before he was... He you can't make up this kind of suffering, you know. I think this one was about, uh, you know, how, how in the reservation there's so much drinking and, uh, you know, after like a car accident, you know, the, uh, the effects of a car accident, you know, the mother taking out the, her son from, uh, from the automobile and, and you know, crying, crying over her over his, his body. And here I'll show you like all the steps that went to make me, that went to make this huge painting that I, that I created. The federal troops, I wanted uh, a scene like the Pieta, you know, the, the mother crying over the body. Uh, and I wanted the element of the musicians in the, in the work. So I, I had this problem, I was like, how am I gonna get the, the Mexican federal police to pose for the, for the painting? Lucky that I met this man that he had been a, he, had been a, he was a police officer and he had been with a SWAT team. And he had the whole gear. So he had me with the... I mean, on the painting, I just changed the color and made it look like and added the, the badge of the Mexican Federal Police to make it look uh, authentic. The, the second year that I was in New Mexico, I, I, I did this work, this painting, and I got a lot of, a lot of people from the community to, to pose for the, for the painting. And a lot of them uh, were from uh, Ciudad Juarez. They were from Ciudad Juarez and they had settled in, in Roswell, New Mexico. And so they, had, they knew people that had been affected by the violence in Juarez. And so I mean, I, I had really great models. Like the, the community was very supportive. They, they just really enjoyed, you know, posing and reenacting, you know, acting out the scenes. This is, uh, if you, any of you have ever been to Reynosa, this is a building from, you know, close to the bridge. And I, I'd walked past that building when I was a kid and I always found it really interesting. You know, the multicolors. Uh, the, the bricks. So I wanted to use that as, as the background for the painting. I mean, this is not where the shooting happened, but I want, I wanted, that's what I wanted in the background. I made a, a drawing in perspective, you know. Made the ground plane, the buildings. I mean, this took, you know, about two months or three months to do, you know, like, to get the bricks to look right in perspective was a challenge, but, you know, I was trying to do it as, as closely as, you know, Caravaggio or Velasco would have done it, you know, getting out a ruler, getting your horizon line vanishing points. Uh, so, I think this in itself is a work of art. Then, you, then I started drawing the figures on tracing paper and moving them around, see where the, they would look better in the composition. And see, those are examples of my drawing. I do a lot of drawing. I love, I mean, I've done a lot of figure drawing. 
I enjoy drawing as much as I do painting. The reason I don't really show paint, show drawings is because I feel they're not as impressive as a painting. And that's that's the studio I had in uh, New Mexico. And I had needed scaffolding to get up here. You know, I had other scaffolding bigger than this. This was just so I could get up to the to their faces because they're they're all like seven feet tall. They're like they're bigger than life size. This is how it looks. You know, wow. finished. Now, it's really, a, if you look at this painting, and I have, it's, it's a good thing that I have these two here. Because it's, a, it's in a way the same composition. I found this subject matter that would allow me to put figures throughout the composition. And then when I was doing that painting, uh, I've replaced these guys with the Mexican Federal Police. So this, even though I did this like in 2002, it was a sketch for a, for, for a class, you know, a composition class. I feel like I got to use this for that same, for that center uh, panel, for that painting. This is me up here. I'm the, this is me like looking down at my, this world that I created because, of, you know, all those people that I photographed, they never stood in that street in Reynosa. You know, it, this is really, it's mental space. This is all in my head. It's not something that uh, ever happened. It's based on something that happened, but this actually, as it is, never really happened. So I made this guy, you know, hold the AK-47, so he was, a, you know, a hitman. Like a few years back, you had a, one of the cartel leaders killed in the Cuernavaca, somewhere out there. And the, the, the person that went to claim the body was, you know, the the mother and the sister. Like all his, you know, lieutenants, they, nobody showed up to claim the body. But the mother showed up, you know, crying and they claimed the, his, you know, his corpse. So that's, you know, what I was kind of trying to get across in that, in that, uh, in that scene of the painting. You see them on the street in Reynosa, and Progreso, and Ciudad Juarez, and Tijuana, you see them in any border town. Uh, so there could be just people standing there, but also they could be, you know, singing, you know, they're singing about what's uh, what's happening. See there, like you've got somebody standing, so you get a good sense of, a, of the size. And this is when it was shown in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The close-up of the, of the center figures. And see in the background, uh, I've got the logo for the Sabritas. Sabritas is the, uh, like the Doritos from Mexico. And I've always liked that it's a happy, smiley face. You know, you know how light and darkness helps contrast, creates contrast, and it makes for interesting painting. You know, you've got all this sorrow surrounding this happy smiley face right there. So I think it makes the sorrow stronger and it makes the happy face even. But I think it also says a lot about Mexico. You know, it's, uh, this is the one that I'm currently currently working on. This is the. I've got this in my studio, and I'm, uh, it's part, you know, the figures are in underpainting, the background is painted with, you know, sun color. But that's the most recent one, and it's a, uh, so I was working on, on that painting and meeting all these people. Uh, everybody had this, you know, dramatic story that they would tell me, you know. Uh, now this, this family is on the, on the, on that large painting, uh, see, that's the man in the one that I'm working on right now. See this lady in orange and the teenager in the back. That's you know they were a family and they they helped me you know find more people to pose for this and you know she the the lady in orange the one in the middle and the one that I'm working on right now. She told me that you know when she was you know 11 or 12 she would help her her dad smuggle people from Ciudad Juarez to El Paso. So I mean that story just you know gave me an idea for a painting, and that's the, the one that I'm doing. But it, it's connected to this, you know, hope to sell them, to show them together, so that people can see how, you know, there's the characters are jumping from one canvas to the other, kind of like a book, like a chapter in a book. So you have the Western landscape, uh, and then you look at the colonias that have sprung there, you know, along the border. And, that's a result of the uh, maquiladoras, and that's because of the globalized economy. So, uh, you know, try and 
Yeah, again, it, it's hard to do figurative work, so you've got to find ways of justifying. So I feel you know it's relevant in that way. It's it's a contemporary landscape. The colonias, I mean, they're everywhere in Mexico, and it's because of this disparity of the economic situation. I don't know if I made any sense. Well, that's it. Thank you.